Hello, my name is Christian and I'm going to show you some very basic steps to image processing of your luminance, red, green and blue images that you've just taken. In fact, the good news is you can download the same images that I'm using now. I'm going to give you a download link. I'll also give you my contact address below. So if there are any suggestions for further tutorials, if there are any personal questions, if you want personal tu tutoring on further image processing, just contact me. So let's go. I'm going to use a software called CCD Stack. And again, I will give you all the information below in the text. CCD Stack is simple to use, and that is what I recommend. So we open the images at first. And this is, these are, this, these are images that I took before from an episode on Sky Tours. So this was all done live on a telescope called T30. Now, what is important um, uh, to know is it's actually very simple because if you use the calibrated images, you don't have to worry about flats or darks or anything. Eye Telescope does it all for, all for you. So we import the calibrated images. We import, in this case, from T30, and I'm using Le the Lagoon Nebula, Luminance, Red, Green, and Blue. So here we do, we import them. Import them into CCD Stack. This takes a moment, and this is what they look like. And I purposely overexposed these. These were 300 second uh, images so that you can see how we can deal with errors because this is what real images look like. You said, oh my goodness, this looks terrible. We call these blooms. And in fact, by using these navigation keys here on the left, you can navigate through the images. And in this case, you can see right on top what you have. This is the red, this is the luminance, the blue, and the green, and they look very overexposed. So the first thing is we need to clean. The way we clean is we go to the top menu, press on process, and we say data reject procedures. That opens a new window. And in this menu here, we take reject blooms because that's what they're called. They are, they are saturated lines in these on the CCD sensor that go vertical. They're very typical for that. And we need to reject them and we need to replace them and clean up. So we say reject blooms. So the saturation limit should be around 40,000, 45,000. So I'm going to just type in 45,000 and I say apply to all. And there we go. It's identified them. You can see that and it's cleaned them and it shows you this is where they are. And we can go through the images now and you can see some of them have very strong blooms and it's identified them correctly. So I think the threshold of 45,000 was about correct. And now we have to clean up the image. We have to tell the software, we don't just want to leave something dark there because it's removed them. We want to interpolate. So I say interpolate rejected pixels. So it's going to look at the surrounding and clean up the image. So I say apply to all and there some magic happens. They all seem to have disappeared or have they? So let's go through the images one by one. And you can see the red looks fairly clean. The green looks fine, but the blue still has some streaks. Now you could try and reduce these further by maybe lowering the saturation level, but it could get a little bit messy. The best way at this stage would be to clean them up with programs like, so like Photoshop, but I can show that on a separate uh, tutorial. In this case, we're not going to worry about it. Let's just continue because this is really extremely overexposed and is not the usual way you would see the images. But as I said, let's intentionally make it messy so that you can deal with the worst situations. Okay, so we've done that. We've cleaned up the images and now we have to align them. Align them call, is called registering. It picks out certain stars and will align all the images so that when we make a color image, the red, green, blue, and luminance are perfectly aligned. By the way, the files that we use, and I'm sorry for not mentioning it earlier, are called FITS files. Those are flexible 
oh, I forgot the <laughs> abbreviation, transfer files, flexible something transfer files, and they're used for scientific purposes. And um, why they used is, yeah, I think it's flexible information transfer uh, system. What, what a strange abbreviation. And they are used because um, they contain a lot of information about the telescope that is important. For example, if you do astrometry, then the exact coordinates are registered on the image. Okay, so let's do it. Let's register. So I'm doing, I go to stack, register. And the best one to use is CCDIS. Again, I'm giving the link below. So you just say align all and you wait for the error. The error is 0 0.066, the root mean square error. That's fine. They should in general, you should leave them below 0 0.1 and you will notice if they're not aligned properly. The good news is that CCDIS is a very strong algorithm for aligning it. That's why I'm choosing CCD stack. And now we have to apply it to the whole image. So we use a spline technique. You can use the B cubic B spline as the basic and you just say apply to all. And now it's working and then you can go through the images with these arrow keys and you can see they are aligned very well. They're perfectly aligned now. Um, there seems to be no movement. So it's time to produce color. So we go to color, create color, and now you can see the software was very intelligent. It has found, and you can see these are very long names, luminance, and then this is the red, green, and blue. But you have to be careful sometimes, at some telescopes, the red is not designated with red, it's designated with the capital R, and sometimes the software can't find it, so you have to help it. And you can do this easily by looking, and you have to scroll through it because it's a very long name, and you have to look for the correct designation. And once you've done that, you just say create. And there it is. Now it looks a little bit too red, and that's why the, the software is asking you to set the background, which we will do now. We choose a dark area, which in this case is on the left of the image, and it says just take a, make a square here, a rectangle, that's what I'm doing, making a square or rectangle, and uh, it tells you that's the size of a rectangle and so on. It's rejected some, some, some bright spots, and you just say OK. And that's fine. You don't have to uh, apply the background because it's already done. Uh, just to show you, it just shows you can you can adjust the colors now. And we do have a beautiful color image. Now you do notice, and if we if we zoom in, you'll see there are some blue streaks here. Remember, I said the blue image isn't cleaned up completely, and uh, we we would do that in Photoshop before if it hasn't been cleaned up perfectly, but we did produce a very nice color image. And with this color image, you have indeed the first possibility to send it to your friends. Now, in order to send it to your friends, what you do is you need to save it. So you go to file and you say save and it says this. It's very simple to save this. And that's exactly what you do. You save it and let's go to the desktop and we will call this Lagoon Color. And it saves it as a TIFF 16-bit scaled. You can save it also as a JPEG. I don't recommend that. A scaled means it's scaling it properly so that you can open it in Photoshop later. So you just say save. And if you want to do any adjustments, you can do that here. You can also press auto scale. It'll do that. Auto scale usually works fairly well. I pressed auto scale and that's fine. Okay. And then it's done. Okay. It saved it. So just to do it again, file save this. And there you go, where um, we went to our, our desktop. And there it is, Lagoon Color. And I'm just going to save over it again, replace it. There you go. And that's it. And that should be the basic steps. Again, feel free to contact me for further information or help. Thank you so much.